The road to success is never an easy one to take, and few people understand that better than the queen of diva, Mariah Carey. On her way to winning five Grammy Awards, 19 World Music Awards, and eight Guinness World Records, Mariah has had to deal with her fair share of drama. While her life today may appear all glitz and glam, the reality is that the All I Want for Christmas singer comes from a home marked by violence, deceit, and racism. In today's video, we dive headfirst into the messy and chaotic world of one of the greatest selling female artists of all time. Carrie was born March 27, 1969 in Huntington, New York. The youngest of three children, Carrie's childhood suffered as a result of racial tension both within the family and from outside it. Carrie's mother was a former opera singer of Irish descent, while her father, an aeronautical engineer, had African-American and Black Venezuelan heritage. At a time when biracial relationships were less accepted, Carrie's mom was punished and disowned by her family for marrying a Black man. Carrie's family faced further discrimination as they struggled to integrate into the predominantly white community of Huntington, New York. Tensions got so high that one neighbor even resorted to poisoning the family dog, as well as setting fire to their car. It wouldn't be long before Mariah's parents got divorced, and she would lose touch with her father. Mariah's mom worked several jobs to support the family, and the future superstar found that she was left home alone a lot of the time. It was during these long periods of solitude that Carrie got her first taste for music, imitating her mother's take on Verdi's opera Rigoletto in Italian. Carrie describes her childhood as one where she felt afraid of growing up. Her brother was an extremely violent person, while her sister suffered as a troubled and traumatized teen, something Carrie says she was aware of even as a young girl. In an interview on The Oprah Winfrey Show, the host questions Carrie on her traumatic relationship with her older sister, when I was 12 years old, my sister drugged me with Valium, offered me a pinky nail full of cocaine, inflicted me with third degree burns, and tried to sell me out to a pimp, a 51 year old Carrie said. When asked by the host why she thinks her sister acted this way, Carrie replied, we don't even really know each other. We didn't grow up together, but we did. Like they were on their journeys by the time I got into the world. They had already been damaged, in my opinion. Carrie continues, they just grew up with the experience of living with a black father and a white mother together as a family, and I was for the most part living with my mother, which they saw as easier, but in reality, it was not. They have always thought that my life was easy. An easy life was definitely something Carrie did not have, and many parts thanks to her broken older brother, who Carrie says brought violence and anger into the home. I was a little girl with very few memories of a big brother who protected me. More often, I felt I had to protect myself from him. In a heartbreaking account, Carrie details the abuse her brother inflicted on her mother and father during her childhood. It took 12 cops to pull my brother and father apart. The big bodies of men, all entangled like a swirling hurricane, crashed loudly into the living room. For a young Mariah, seeing the relationships of the adults in her life be so fractured and violent only served to confuse the singer. But her brother's abusive behavior didn't stop there, with the obsessed singer recalling another violent outburst of his, this time between Morgan and their mother. He, Morgan, pushed my mother with such force that her body slammed into the wall, making a loud cracking sound. In her memoir, Mariah also exposes her brother's involvement in drug dealing claiming that it was her mother who told her that Morgan was dealing drugs, including cocaine. As someone who was heavily involved in the Manhattan nightlife scene, Carrie's brother began to associate himself with a more criminally inclined crowd and likely saw dealing drugs as a way to make some extra cash. But if being a violent drug dealing asshole wasn't enough for Morgan, he takes it one step further. In a bombshell declaration to court, Carrie detailed how her brother had also been implicated in a murder-for-hire conspiracy, admittedly accepting a payment in connection with that conspiracy, and ultimately testified in judicial proceedings about the conspiracy. In normal people talk, that means her brother accepted money to kill someone. Yikes. Morgan denies the claims his sister made against him, even going as far as to sue her for libel and emotional distress. But despite a home life that was less than glamorous, Carrie was able to find comfort in her music and art. She began writing poetry and lyrics while attending Harbor Fields High School, where she graduated in 1987. While there, Carrie would earn the nickname Mirage, as she was often absent from school working as a demo singer. The Long Island music scene gave Carrie the chance to work with musicians such as Gavin Christopher and Ben Margulies. 
and soon after graduating, Carrie left Long Island and made her way to New York City. Here, she began taking her first steps towards stardom, landing a gig singing backup for freestyle singer Brenda K. Starr. Unfortunately for Carrie, though, the music industry can be a dangerous place for a young starling, and it wasn't long before someone took advantage of the 18-year-old singer. That someone was head of Columbia Records, Tommy Mottola. Carrie met Mottola when she accompanied Brenda Starr to a music executive's party in the city. While there, she handed her demo tape to Matola, who listened to it on a car ride home. Matola immediately told the driver to turn around, but when he got back to the party, Carrie had already left. What followed was like a modern day Cinderella story, where Matola spent two weeks looking for the Long Island native, only to find out another label had beaten him to the punch and had expressed interest in Carrie's unique voice. A bidding war ensued and Matola ultimately won. He immediately got to work on producing her first album, the self-titled Mariah Carey. It was during the production of her debut album that Matola and Carey began to date, and in 1993, the pair were married in a lavish half-million-dollar ceremony at St. Thomas Church. A life of freedom and excitement was quickly replaced with a sense of imprisonment and control. The young Carey described in her memoir the feeling of being nearly smothered to death during her marriage to the music exec. The 44-year-old Matola had a long and strict set of rules the 24-year-old singer had to abide by while they lived together. Amongst the most disturbing allegations the young singer made against her record exec ex are that he monitored her every move inside their home with motion-activated security camera. He also wouldn't let her leave the house without his explicit permission and even hired staff to spy on the singer when she wasn't with him. Things really came to a head when Matola ran a butter knife along her cheeks and down her throat in the company of two of his friends when he realized the marriage was over. For a young Carrie, fame had come at a price. Despite being instrumental in carving Carrie's early successes, Matola was a self-professed tyrant and looks back on his treatment of the superstar as justified. If it seemed like I was controlling, I apologize. Was I obsessive? Yes but that was also part of the reason for her success. Unfortunately, Matola's abuse didn't just stop at physical, with Carrie accusing her ex-husband of being racist towards her. In one instance, Carrie detailed how, from the moment Tommy signed me, he tried to wash the urban off me, just as he did with my appearance. I always felt like he wanted to convert me into what he understood, a mainstream, meaning white, artist. Carrie goes on to detail another explosive episode, recounting the time Matola, who was himself white, flew into a rage after Carrie praised rapper and businessman Sean Combs. Matola responded with, Puffy will be shining my shoes in two years, to which Carrie uncharacteristically stood up to Matola, telling him what he said was blatantly racist. Matola then reacted to Carrie's scorn by slamming his fist on the table and announcing, I just want everybody to know that Thanksgiving is canceled. These type of outbursts weren't rare for Carrie to witness, and they became such a frequent occurrence that the hero singer would come to refer to them as Tommy tantrums. Carrie also accuses Matola of dismissing her biracial identity. Tommy never wanted to talk about my biracial identity. If he wasn't ashamed of it, he certainly didn't want to promote it. Life under Tommy Matola proved to be difficult for the singer, and in her memoir, she goes into detail about how she felt during her time living in storybook manner. It's not that there are no words, it's just that they still get stuck moving up from my gut or they disappear into the thickness of my anxiety. In the beginning of our time together, I was walking on eggshells. Then it became a bed of nails and then a minefield. I never knew when or what would make him blow and the anxiety was relentless. Carrie admits to initially seeing Matola's control as a way of protecting her from her own dysfunctional family, but soon grew wary of it. Matola would tell the young star everything she wanted to hear. You're the most talented person I've ever met, or you can be as big as Michael Jackson. Something that All I Want for Christmas Singer says she fell hook, line, and sinker for. Carrie details an experience where Matola flew into a rage after she went to Burger King with a female rapper without his permission. It was this incident that ultimately inspired Carrie to leave her husband. For Carrie, her youth was marked by this recurring theme of betrayal. It always seemed to be the people closest to her that hurt her the most. Carrie's relationship with her mother is one that is strained and difficult even to this day. It even got to the point where the singer no longer refers to her mother as mom, instead calling her Patricia. 
Carrie reveals the emotional turmoil her mother inflicted on her during a particularly low point in her life back in 2001. During the press run for her doomed film Glitter, Carrie famously had a very messy and very public breakdown as a result of the growing pressure of success and the upcoming release of her film. During this time, the recently divorced singer sought refuge at her mother's home, and after a confrontation between the two women, Carrie's mom allegedly called 911, and the police took Carrie away to a rehab facility against her will. Angry and upset with her daughter, Patricia Carey had lashed out, and the singer admits that her mother's actions deeply hurt her. It was immediate that she was in charge, and rather than say, you know what, we're okay, I am here taking care of my daughter, she's tired, somebody called the cops by mistake, whatever. It was like, no, because you defied me, this is what is going to happen. Strangely enough though, Carrie admits to feeling a sense of relief sitting in the back of the cop car. It's a vivid memory I'll never forget, she said. But at that moment, that seemed like a better alternative than where I was before. Carrie's life wouldn't remain like this forever though. After her divorce from Matoa, Carrie met and married Wild and Out host Nick Cannon with whom she had two beautiful, healthy kids. Despite the pair separating, her relationship with Cannon was for the most part healthy and seemed to make the pop singer happy. He listened to me. Today, they are good friends and are focused on co-parenting their children, Monroe and Moroccan. The Songbird Supreme also continued to elevate her musical career, releasing countless albums to critical and commercial acclaim. Carrie was even able to branch out onto the screen with a cameo on the Fox drama Empire and her own reality TV show, Mariah's World. Despite an upbringing filled with trauma, the queen of divas has certainly not let it slow her down. Now an inductee into the Songwriters Hall of Fame and officially the highest certified female artist in US history, Carrie has broken every barrier in her way. Not bad for a girl whose dog got poisoned, huh? Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.